Hello again. I'm Ted Warburton, Senior Fellow of the Arnold Institute at Teachers College. Before I share some concluding remarks on the 2021 symposium, I want to begin by thanking Jody and John Arnhold, President Bailey and Provost Rowley, for their support of this inaugural symposium. I would also like to acknowledge Executive Director and Professor Barbara Bashaw, Professor Matthew Henley, and Assistant Director David Sadowski for their excellent work in coordinating this event. Our theme, Pioneering Visions for Access and Equity in Dance Education, was envisioned as a way both to foreground the Harlem Renaissance as an intellectual and cultural movement with particular resonance for Teachers College and as a powerful reaffirmation of the Black and African American experience as foundational to dance history and dance education today. In his insightful presentation, Dr. Perpiner reminded us that the intention of the artists and scholars behind the Harlem Renaissance was to build an infrastructure that would support an artistic movement that reflected the Harlem imperative to pursue a path that led to African-American representation and a creation of work that explored a people's cultural history. We learned from Dr. Laverty's extensive research on Professor Charles H. Williams exactly how this path could be paved. Professor Williams not only established modern dance in the curriculum of a black university, he laid the foundation for research into black dance, making a major contribution to American dance and dance education. In Laverty's dance reconstructions, we could visualize how the Hampton Institute Creative Dance Group inspired students and audiences alike with its use of Haitian and African cultural and spiritual themes in the modern dance genre. Finally, as Dr. Cruz Banks reminded us, such dance and dancing together can submerge a group in unique worldviews that nurture indigenous intellects and sensory acuity. These images of laying a foundational infrastructure, of constructing something new, and of seeking unique worldviews are truly powerful metaphors for our present day aspirations. It is our turn to build up a more equitable future. I imagine the idea of building up must also have been in the hearts and minds of those Harlem inhabitants gazing out on the landscape of New York City in the early 1920s. For decades, the sounds of the city had been characterized by a cacophony of construction as skyscrapers rose to dominate the skyline. In fact, the equitable building was supposed to be the last of Manhattan's skyscrapers. When it opened in 1915, it cast, in a very real sense, everything around it into shadow, a 555-foot neoclassical cliff rising sheer from the street, looming over Broadway, and condemning a swath of the city's inhabitants to a life in permanent shadow. Its construction spurred New York's authorities into action. A year later, the city introduced its very first zoning law, decreeing that any future skyscrapers would have to taper away from the street so as to allow light and air to permeate to ground level. Like any good policy, rather than herald the end of the skyscraper era, the zoning law started a boom. Architects scurried to design buildings that complied with the new regulations. Capitalist monoliths with a human face. The results, the Chrysler, the Empire State, and the rest, still stand as the jewels of Manhattan skyline, the beauty that makes them compelling a direct consequence of an obstacle overcome. That truth holds away from architecture as well. In the history of dance and dance education, we often find that the complications addressed and compromises reached, the workarounds explored and imperfections unmasked, those artists and educators who step out from the shadows do not diminish our sense of wonder, but increase it. Necessity is not only the mother of invention, but of admiration and affection too. Nowhere do we find this truth more relevant than in our present day. Not unlike the 1920s, we find ourselves moving into a post-pandemic setting that is spurring its own complicated renaissance in representation, where more and more people are using digital technologies to present themselves in new ways online. To complicate matters further, being and becoming online is taking on new, nuanced meanings at a moment when the dominant culture is struggling with under-recognized and unacknowledged burdens of institutional racism, classism, and colonialism, whose legacies impact all media and visions of self-presentation 
identity construction, and personal education. As we conclude this inaugural symposium, I urge us to recall again those visionary Black and African American artists and scholars of the Harlem Renaissance. Their lives and their labors must stand tall in our histories, reminding us that we need more light and air, access and equity to permeate to ground level. We need more respect for diversity throughout our histories, not less. Our students must know artists like Winfield, Guy, and Dunham, must appreciate leaders like Charles H. Williams and Burrell McBurney, and must learn from scholars like Dr. Cruz Banks if we are to stand up and dance together at the forefront of our contemporary movement for greater inclusion in society. Thank you.